Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Zero and Negative Exponents Part 1. So up till now, every single exponent we've talked about in the entire class has been a positive number. 3 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 3, 3 to the power of 10, things like this. But it's actually possible, not only possible, but quite common to have exponents that are negative numbers and also exponents that are zero. Now we have to talk about what this means and I want to motivate it by giving you a real life example. So stay tuned for that. And then we're also going to show you how to handle negative exponents and zero exponents and show you why negative exponents behave the way they do. So at the end of this, you will not only understand how to solve the problems, you'll know why we do it the way we do it and you'll have a practical example in your mind of when we use negative exponents. So. Negative exponents are used to represent very small things. Positive exponents, as you know, can make very large numbers. Negative exponents can be used to make very small numbers. So when we're talking about the size of a cell in your body, or the size of the atom, or something really tiny, it's going to be a lot more appropriate to use a negative exponent because negative exponents really make very small numbers. So let me show you an example of that. You know, the smallest thing I can think of that everybody would probably be familiar with is the atom, right? Atoms are incredibly tiny. You know this already. But how tiny? How do we write it in terms of a number? So it turns out that the typical size of an atom, uh, and, and of course it depends on the atom, but the typical size of an atom is the way you would see it written down in a book or some scientific literature or something will be as follows. 10 to the negative 10 meters. Now you have to have in your mind the idea of what a meter is. Outstretch your arms both directions. That's about a meter, right? One meter. But this is not one meter. It's way smaller than a meter. An atom is, of course, way smaller than that. And the way we write it down is 10 to the negative 10 meters. You probably have seen this just reading in, in, in life. You may have run across it before, but never understood why or what a negative exponent does. The exponent here is not 10. The exponent is negative 10. Right? So I'm going to show you what it means, and then I'm going to show you why we treat negative exponents the way that we do. But first, you have to kind of go with me on a journey and just accept that what I'm telling you is true. So when we say something like 10 to the negative 10, what we're really saying is that this is the same thing as moving this entire thing down under a fraction and then making this a positive exponent. So this right here is exactly equivalent to just moving it downstairs below the number one and bringing it downstairs into the denominator of a fraction, but then changing the exponent to a positive. This is the point where you look at it and you're like, why? Well, you're gonna have to wait for why, just for a second. Just trust me, I'm gonna get to the why. I like explaining why, I love why, but we have to get there. So just trust me that the negative exponent means that it moves down and it becomes positive, Let's see what, that ha what happens if that is the case, right? So we're saying that an atom is this big. So we're saying an atom is one over 10 to the 10 uh, meters in the, in the denominator. But what is 10 to the 10 uh, as a number? Well, this is in the denominator, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. You do it 10 times. So what's that gonna be? It's gonna be a one followed by 10 zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All of this is in the denominator. Put your commas in place. There's a comma, three more, there's a comma, and there's a comma. So, and this is in the unit of meters. So what we're saying is that the typical diameter of an atom is one divided by 10 billion. Whenever you do this division, one divided by 10 billion, that's gonna be an incredibly tiny number. That is the number of the size of uh, uh, the fraction of a meter that an atom is. Now, if you grab a calculator, and you actually put a one and put one followed by 10 zeros and one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So one divided by 10 billion like this. So this is, you know, hundred, this is hundreds, thousands, this is millions, this is billions. So 10 billion. And you, and you hit the enter key. What you're going to get in the calculator window is 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, followed by a one. Because we know when we divide by uh, powers of 10 like this, we essentially move the decimal back uh, however many zeros we have. So if the decimal's here, because the decimal's here, if the decimal's here, go back 10 positions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So an atom is this big. Zero point, and there's nine zeros followed by a one meters. So if you take a meter and you chop it into incredibly tiny distances, this is how small an atom is. It's inconceivably small. 
none of us, even me, can really imagine how tiny it is, okay? Because they're so incredibly tiny. Compared to a cell or a virus, an atom is absolutely infinitesimally small. Atoms and things that we touch every day are incredibly huge compared to the size of an atom. Now, you don't want to write all these decimals down, all these numbers. You certainly don't want to write this fraction all the time. It's all these zeros. It's crazy. So what we do is we have something called a negative exponent. It's much easier to write this, and this means 1 over 10 to the 10th. And this is a much shorter and compact way of writing small numbers. So what we have established is that A, atoms are small, B, the size of an atom is 10 to the power of negative 10, and that when you have a negative exponent, you just drop it downstairs, make it positive, and then you have, a, of course, an incredibly tiny number. All negative exponents are going to give small numbers because they drop in the bottom and become large numbers, thereby, when you do the division, making it a small number. Now, what we need to do is now transition from, hey, here's a cool example, why do we drop it to the bottom? Why does that work? Why? Okay, so let's get to the why. I told you we were going to get to the why, now I have to, to make good on my promise. Let's start with something you know. We have learned in the past uh, 2 to the power of 3, right? And we've also learned in, in the past 2 to the power of 2. And we've also learned in the past 2 to the power of 1. What are these things equal to? These are, these are things we've learned before. 2 to the power of 3 is what? This is, I'll put a little equal sign down here. This is 2 times 2 times 2, right? This one here is 2 times 2. This one here is, there's just one of them there, so it's just 2. So when we multiply this out, this is equal to, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. And this is equal to uh, uh, 4, like this. And then this guy, of course, is just equal to 2. So what we have figured out is 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4, and 2 to the first is just 2. So this is what we've learned from positive integers. You can see positive exponents. As the exponent gets bigger, the number gets bigger. So 2 to the power of 5 is even bigger. 2 to the power of 11, 2 to the power of 100, 2 to the power of 1,000. It's bigger. But as we start with these big exponents and we go down, the number gets smaller. As the exponent gets smaller, the number gets smaller. So what would happen if we get to 2 to the power of 0? Well, we went from here to here and it got smaller. Here to here, it got smaller. Here to here, it should get smaller. But it's hard for us to visualize what happens because there's no 2's anymore. Well, this guy is special. 2 to the power of 0, in fact, any number other than 0, raised to the power of 0, is a special number. It's just equal to 1. And this goes back into the definition of math. There is a proof I could share with you that shows you why it's equal to 1. But that's beyond the scope of this lesson right now. You need to know that a math is like playing chess. There are rules to chess. And once you know the rules, you can make a complex game of chess. But the rules are in place by the rule giver or the game maker. And math is a set of rules. And some of the rules are addition and subtraction, and some of them are multiplication and division. Exponents are just basically shorthand multiplication. So there is a proof that I could show you that when you take something and raise it to the zero power, you get one. Again, the scope is beyond, it's beyond the scope of this class. But this one, I put it in red because it's more of a basic definition. It comes from the foundation of what, what multiplication is. And I know it's hard to visualize because this is 2 cubed and 2 squared and 2 to the first, but we know the number has to be smaller than this because, and you would probably think it's 0, but actually it's taken to be a definition that 2 to the 0 is 1. I'm going to leave it there and we're going to skip past that one and we're going to go over here to 2 to the negative 1. And then we're going to talk about 2 to the negative 2. And then we're going to talk about 2 to the negative 3 and you could go 2 to the negative 4 on and on this way. So what happens? As we go from 2 cubed down here, the actual answer gets smaller. We go down another exponent, the number gets smaller. We go down to, to the 0 power, and I'm telling you, without any proof, the answer is 1. When we go down here, it should be something less than 1, right? What is it? Well, by definition, we're saying that this 2 to the first power is making a fraction 1 over 2 to the first. Move it downstairs, make it 1 over 2 to the first. This guy is going to be uh, 1 over 2 to the second power. Move it downstairs, make it a positive exponent. This one is going to be 1 over 2 to the power of 3. And if I go over here and make 2 to the negative fourth power, can you guess what the answer is going to be? It's going to be 1 over 2 to the positive fourth. So anytime you see a negative exponent, train yourself. This really goes in the denominator and becomes positive. Now let's calculate what these things really are. 
So this one is just going to be equal to 1 half. This one, this was going to be, what's 2 squared? That's 4, right? So this is going to be uh, equal to 1 fourth. What's 2 cubed? That's 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. So this is 1 eighth. And this one is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You multiply all that, you're going to get 16. So 1 over 16. So notice what's happening here. Here, when we focus on these two, 2 to the first is 2, but 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. And then here, 2 squared is 4, but 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. So basically, every exponent that you see is negative. It just goes in the bottom, and it kind of makes a mirror image. But all of these are smaller, and notice they're getting smaller as we go this way. 2 to the 0 is 1. Then we get 1 half. Then we get 1 fourth. Then we get 1 eighth. Then we get 1 sixteenth. So the reason negative exponents get and produce small numbers, that's why we use them in science to describe small distances or very small times, things like that, is because a negative exponent is really a shorthand way of writing a fraction. This is the punchline. A negative exponent is a shorthand way of writing a fraction. Again, a negative exponent is a shorthand way of writing a fraction. Last time, a negative exponent is a shorthand way of writing a fraction. You might say, why does the negative exponent make a fraction? That comes down to the rule giver. I'm making the chessboard. I can make my own notation up to represent what I want. And in this case, the negative exponent means you drop it to the bottom, you make it positive. And the pattern then follows. As the exponent gets smaller, this gets smaller. As the exponent gets smaller, the output gets smaller. As the exponent gets smaller, the output got smaller. As the exponent got smaller, the output got smaller. Exponent gets even smaller, output gets smaller. Exponent gets smaller, output gets smaller. Exponent gets smaller, output gets smaller. I'm trying to show you by patterns that it makes sense that negative exponents must produce small values because all the positive exponents, when they get bigger, give bigger values. So if we keep going the other way, they must produce smaller values, and this is the way they do. By dropping them into the bottom and making those powers positive in the bottom, the actual answers get smaller and smaller. Now we said 2 to the 0 is 1. It turns out that any number to the 0 power is 1. 5 to the 0 is 1. I can even write it down here, you know. 5 to the 0 is 1. You know, 6 to the 0 is 1. Any number to the 0 is 1, but there's one problem, and that problem is 0 to the power of 0. This one is undefined. And this becomes down to, when you get into more advanced math, you study how how number systems are set up, you study how algebra is set up, how it was invented, and zero to the power of zero doesn't make sense when you get down into what zero means. Uh, so we can define a number to the zero power, it's always one. But if you try to take zero to the zero power, it's actually not one, it's undefined. That's something you just have to remember. It comes from, you have to have rules, those rules come from the invention and, and the rule book that you make, and that's beyond the scope of this, that's how number systems and how math was invented way beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here. All right, so with all of that out of the way, we're going to do our actual problems here. Here, I have 4 to the negative 5. How do I write this as a positive exponent? Well, I drop it down and make it 1 over 4 to the power of 5. This is the answer. Negative exponent goes down, makes it positive. This is what I want to impress upon you. All right, let's take a look at another quick example. What about 18 to the negative 3 power? What do I do? Well, it's a negative exponent. I drop it to the bottom and make it 18 to the positive 3 power. This is the final answer. What about something a little easier, like 7 to the negative 8 power, right? This is a negative exponent. I drop it down and make it 1 over 7 to the positive 8 power. Every time it's negative, I drop it down and make it positive. Now, what if the base itself was actually negative? So negative 6 raised to the power of negative 12. It does not matter if this is a negative, we just simply drop it down to the bottom and make it a positive exponent. So everything stays the same. It drops downstairs and makes it a positive exponent there. All right, let's take a look at, under our atom here, what about 2 multiplied by 11 to the negative 4? Well, this 2 has nothing to do with anything, so it just gets multiplied, but this becomes 1 over, here we have 11 to the fourth power. Now I could leave it like that, or I could recognize that I can multiply these and make it 2 over 11 to the fourth, because this is like 2 over 1. 2 times 1 is 2, and the 1 times this is this. So I can circle this, or I could probably circle that one too. 
What about negative eight times three to the negative 14 power? Same thing, the negative eight is gonna be multiplied by this. I'm gonna drop it downstairs and make it positive 14. I could leave it like that, or I could just multiply it and basically move this negative eight on the top and then three to the 14th on the bottom because this is over one. Negative eight times one is this, one times this is this. So negative eight over three to the positive 14th power. All right, believe it or not, we're almost done. We only have a few extra, a few more problems here. Uh, let's see, did I do, did I do that one? Nope, didn't do that one yet. Let's take a look at 13 times negative four to the power of negative two. What do I get? Well, this 13 is gonna be multiplied by this, drag it downstairs. The negative four is still the base, positive two power. I could leave it like that, or now I can multiply and make it 13 on the top, negative four squared on the bottom. So 13 over negative four squared. Now for this next one, I want to write it in a positive exponent, but then I want to calculate the answer. What about two to the negative three? We just did this problem in the beginning uh, here as part of our explanation. Uh, what is it? Well, we drop it to the bottom, make it a positive exponent, one uh, over two cubed. So I can write it like this, but if I want to calculate the answer, what is this? On the bottom, two times two times two, that's actually eight. And if I take one divided by eight, and I can do it long division or in a calculator, 0 0.125. So you see, when I have something to the negative exponent, it gives me a small number because it drops it to the bottom and it makes the denominator large. That's why it makes small numbers. So then you can see why this atomic size is so incredibly tiny because when I dropped it down, I made the denominator of this thing so huge, it drives the answer very, very small. All right, what about 17 to the power of zero? Well, we said anything to the zero is one, so the answer is one. The only exception is if you try to take zero and raise it to the zero, that's undefined. You cannot say that that is one. That's just a definitional thing. Everything else to the zero power is just one. And then here's our very last problem, five to the negative two. Let's find it and then we're going to calculate its value. One over five squared, make it positive. And so this is what I would write. Now, if I wanted to write it in terms of an actual number, what is five squared? Five times five is 25. If you go in a calculator or you do long division, one divided by 25 works out to 0 0.04. So this is the decimal equivalent of, of this exponent form, which is the same as one over 25. So notice, again, negative exponents yield small numbers. Negative exponents yield small numbers. Really, 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 really big, where's it at? Really, really big negative exponents yield really, really, really small numbers. So when you're talking about distances very small, like atoms or cells, you're gonna see lots of negative exponents because it's a shorthand way of writing a fraction which gives us a small answer. When we talk about distances to the planets, distances to the galaxy, we have, to the other galaxies, we have very large numbers. So we have very large positive exponents. And as we get down on earthly scales, we don't have too many exponents because we're not too big, we're not too small. But then when we get to very small, we have negative exponents. So big picture, we use very large positive exponents for very large numbers and distances. We use very uh, uh, large negative exponents to uh, measure and, and to express very small distances. And on everyday scales like me and you, we don't really use exponents much at all because all of our measurement systems are kind of built around us. So we don't really need exponents, but very big, positive exponents, very small, negative exponents. Very important for you to know how to deal with them and also why we use them. So practice these, follow us on to the next lesson. We'll get more practice with negative exponents.